Berg here. Today we're going to be talking about acids and bases. This is the unit environmental chemistry and you can actually find this information in topic 3 in your textbook. Uh, I really like this topic. I love acids and bases. It's quite interesting. We're going to do a lot of fun stuff here. So first thing we're going to talk about is what is an acid. I'm going to write this in red because I want you to remember acids red. And I'm going to talk about why in a bit. So an acid, that's a solution that has an excess of these hydrogen ions represented by H+. plus. So that is going to be hydrogen. Okay, And we'll see how that these hydrogens uh, can actually bond to hydroxide, which is going to be basic. But it comes from the Latin word acidus, which means sharp or sour. And that's going to talk to some of the properties we'll discuss. But the more hydrogen ions we have, the more acidic. So the acidity is going to be increased. Okay, so some properties of these acids like I talked about are going to be that it tastes sour. So think of something that tastes sour. Uh, I think about lemon juice. That's an acid. Uh, they're going to conduct electricity. They're corrosive which means that they can break down certain substances. So a lot of acids uh, they can actually corrode fabric, skin, paper. So you think about if you were to get them on your hands it's going to either irritate or it can eat away at the skin. Uh, things like bleach and stuff and such or hydrochloric acid uh, depending on the uh, acidity level but they're going to cause possibly some irritation. Uh, so some react very strongly with metals and then this is why I wanted you to remember acid red um, because it's going to turn blue litmus paper red and we're actually going to work with litmus uh, throughout this unit so that we can help to identify substances as acidic or basic. Now when we use these acids uh, we have some like acetic acid which we'll know as vinegar. If I was to take that vinegar put it on my tongue it's going to taste sour. Uh, I'm not a big fan of vinegar some of you probably are but uh, I'm not going to share that with you as I really don't like uh, acids. Uh, things like citric acid, which is going to be your lemons, your limes, and your oranges. Okay, some of the sour candies. Maybe I'll bring in some sour candies and watch sour faces when you get that uh, substance that was made with an acid. Uh, ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, which is essential to the body. Okay, sulfuric acid, which was one of the first acids that was actually produced, uh, and it aided in the production of fertilizers today and steels, paints, and plastics. Uh, very important acid. Uh, was used for years until the production of many other types of acids as well. And then car batteries, if we didn't have acid in these batteries or if my battery didn't have uh, acid in it, I wouldn't be able to get to school to teach you guys. And I know you're probably disappointed, but, uh, or not. <laughs> Anyways, I couldn't get there if I didn't have that um, acid in my in the battery in my car. So very important. So that's some of the areas we use it. Now I'm going to represent a base which is the, the other type here that we're going to talk about is the base. I'm going to represent it in blue. Remember blue base if you can. So this is going to have an excess which means extra basically or a lot of of hydroxide ions represented by OH and that's hydroxide. Now if you notice hyd hydrogen and hydroxide if we write that together, HOH, another way we can write that is H2O, and that's going to, I'll talk about that in a bit, but think about that as you go through the screencast. What does that mean? And we're actually going to talk about that when we talk about aqueous chemistry a little bit. So another word for base is alkali. So we talk about alkalines in our body and how important they are to uh, neutralizing uh, acids in our body, and we're going to understand a little bit more about that. So we actually have acids, and we have we can put in uh, we have bases in our body that help to neutralize and keep our blood basic at a 7.4 pH, which helps us with that homeostasis. So bases are substances that can accept, which means they can take hydrogen ions, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Properties of bases, these blue bases, okay, are going to be that they feel slippery like a soap or an oven cleaner. It's going to have a tactile feeling of a slippery effect. Uh, they're going to taste bitter, so if I was to put some of this right here, this baking soda, into my mouth, and it's going to taste bitter, and you're going to get to see this face. Or 
that face. Those are the faces I make when I have bitter or sour things. But bases are going to be bitter. So I'm going to gross. Anyways, they're going to be corrosive. Uh, they can conduct electricity. Uh, they don't react with metals. And here is something that's important. They're going to turn red litmus paper blue. Blue base. Okay? I want you to remember that. All right, so we're going to move on. If I could just get this slide to work. All right, some uses of these bases that we're going to find. Well, we, they give soaps and ammonia and other cleaning products their useful properties. Uh, these hydroxide ions, they interact very strongly uh, with certain substances such as dirt and grease. And that's why they're good for removing this hydroxide uh, or these bases are good for removing, say, grease and dirt. So we're going to use those. I have a picture of Tide here. Well, that's actually going to remove dirt from our clothes because the hydroxide is going to react very strongly with the dirt and to keep our clothes nice and clean. Uh, didn't work that good with my white sweater. It's also about 10 years old, but... Um, you know, we got some stains going on there. So, moving on, the pH scale. Now, this scale is very important. I really want you to know this, but the pH is not a measurement, basically, of how basic something is, or substances, or solution. It's how acidic it is, okay? So, well, it can measure both how acidic or how basic the solution is, but it's going to range from 0 to 14, but an actual pH scale is actually going to measure, or we could tip measure an accurate pH from negative 1.5 to 15.5, but we go from 0 to 14. Now, 14 being the most basic, okay, and 0 being the most acidic. Now we have this in the middle right here that is neutral. Okay? And that's 7. So 7 is neutral. You can actually see that right here if you take a look as well. But 7 is a neutral substance, so pure water is neutral. Okay? So pure H2O is going to be have a pH of 7. Okay? And so as we go towards 14 from 7, it's going to become more basic. Okay. And as we go up the ladder towards 0, or sorry, down, not up, sorry, down towards 0, it's going to become more acidic. Okay. Now, this scale is going to be used as we're going to use some indicators. We could use a solution and... Uh, universal indicator we could add drops to an acidic or a basic solution and we can continue to add that indicator and, and we could reach every single one of these colors if we added the right uh, amount or concentration of the solution or sorry not concentration but the amount of that universal indicator we can always use other tests such as pH paper uh, which we will use in the class to actually dip it in the solution we can determine the new or how acidic or basic the solution is or if it's neutral and then we can also take a pH meter which gives us a more accurate reading and we can actually read the pH of a substance. Now the pH scale uh, it's really important that we understand this pH scale. It may go for or we may calculate it from 0 to 14 so maybe uh, something that's very acidic like hydrogen or hydrochloric acid as a zero or something very basic such as sodium hydroxide okay over at this end uh, but what do these numbers represent so they do not represent one pH unit they actually represent a tenfold change in acidity so if I take a two okay and now I have a four what that actually means is it's going to be 10 times less uh, acidic for every number. So if I was to write this out, okay, if I was to write this out, this one here, okay, uh, basically we could represent, if we represent 7 as 1, well, we're looking at how acidic it is. So the 6 would be 10. Then we'd have 100. Then we would have 1,000. Part of my writing, it's tough. Then we would have 10,000, because each one of these is 10 times more acidic. But if we go the other direction, we'd have 0 
0 0.01 and so on and so forth down to the base okay now what that represents is what does pH mean up here well pH is actually going to represent so the P is going to represent n the negative log okay and then the H is going to represent the hydro or hydrogen sorry not hydroxide so what that's going to represent if we take pure water so if we were to take pure, sorry, I don't know if you can see this, pure H2O, then what that's going to actually equal is the negative log, okay, okay, and that's going to be 10 to the power of negative 7, which is pure water. And then that's going to equal, okay, negative 7, and then we're going to get our actual pH, which is going to equal 7, and that's neutral. So pure water is neutral. Now, if we look at that right here, 10 to the power of negative 7, as we go down, then say if we're at 10, it's going to be 10 to the power, so that negative log, 10, 13, 10, negative 13, okay, 4 right here would be 10 to the negative 4, okay, and that's how we can move about the periodic table because it moves in 10 fold. Okay, so what does that represent? Does it represent one pH unit? Absolutely not. It represents a tenfold change in acidity of the solution. So as we move to zero, we get the most acidic. If we move to 14, we get the most basic. As we move numbers, we're not moving one pH value. We're actually moving in tenfold. So if we're moving from a two to a four, then it would actually be a hundred times less acidic. Okay, so a two is a thousand times more acidic than a 4. And that's what that means. Okay, um, The last little bit we're going to talk about here, the last slide we're going to discuss, is going to talk about acid-base reactions. And these acid-base reactions uh, is going to have an effect that we call neutralization, which is really important. This is when we get into uh, aqueous chemistry, which means we're going to form water in the solution. Okay, so like I said, if we have H2O, which is pure water, okay, if we want to rewrite that, we can rewrite it as HOH. Now, if we want to split that up, okay, right here, what we're actually going to get is an H plus, and we're going to, which is hydrogen ion, and then we're going to get an OH, which is hydroxide ion. So what happens is here is oxygen has a negative charge, okay and hydrogen has a positive charge which means that they're going to be attracted to one another okay so this hydrogen is going to want to bond with the oxygen so if I take an excess of these H plus okay I take an excess of them then when I add this hydroxide these acid or these hydro hydrogen ions are going to bond with the hydroxide and they're going to form water now we're forming pure water which means that the uh, acidic solution is going to become less acidic okay so they form water so it's really important to remember because if I had an acidic solution and maybe I touch it and I want to take a base and I want to neutralize it that hydroxide is actually going to form water and then it's going to become less acidic and thus cause des less damage, right? Because they can be very corrosive at times. So if we understand this aqueous chemistry, we can understand how we can neutralize a solution, an acidic solution, by adding a base. But the same way we can neutralize an, a basic solution by adding an acid because the hydrogen ions are going to bond with the hydroxide ions. And when they bond together, they form water. And that's basically what we're doing. So hopefully that makes sense. This is acids and bases. We're going to have a lot of fun throughout this topic. And uh, hopefully the screencast has helped. If you have any questions, please bring them to me. Remember, if you don't understand a portion of it, don't just breeze through it once. Go back to that sp particular spot. Watch the screencast again. And if you have any questions, just ask. I'd be glad to answer those questions. But hopefully this has helped you guys out. And I hope we have a lot of fun in this topic. Thanks for tuning in.